Okay, so this will be the second video on this uh, wood stick thing. Um, the first one was just talking about bark and all that stuff, and this is a piece of driftwood and what I'm going to carve on it. And I've already got the point, if you didn't see the first video, where it sits nicely against the wall, so it will be right here. And I did notice that there's bug holes in, in this. I noticed some here and uh, some up back there too, and there's a big crack that goes across here too. So, but you got to start off with your center line. I know it gets tricky on ones like this, but let's have our center line uh, right here. This is going to be a like a not a normal wood spear. It's going to be a big, long. He's going to have a long nose, a long face, and this is my. These are my least favorite things to carve because it's like th three and a half, four feet tall to carve for YouTube because I can't really get the whole picture in. Of the carving when it's well I'll have to take it outside but I have to put it on the table like this you know and then this end hangs off the table it's just nothing but a pain in the pain in the butt but anyways I'm gonna get carving uh, maybe I'll do a talk through let's see what happens okay like I said this is gonna be a one uh, fun one to try and film on on film this thing zoomed in or something nope okay so where do we want his forehead well, maybe we'll put it right here. This is going to be a lot of carving. And his nose will come. I could use this for his nose. But I just don't think that's the way it's going to happen. And then his mustache will come down here. I'll carve that. I'll draw. I'll draw that in later. Okay. So there's his eyes. You guys see that nose, eyes. His mustache will come down. It's gonna have. I want to. I've been thinking. I want to leave this one natural, right? Like just <clears throat> if it's not ugly wood inside. Kind of looks like it might be spalted actually. But if it's not that bad of wood inside, once I get into it, we'll see how it looks and. I might just be able to oil it or possibly you don't even need to do anything with it. Just leave it natural, right? You don't always have to put something on it. Anyways, I'm going to get this fan fired up and I guess I'll start carving here. I'll do a talk through, I guess. Okay, guys, this is my fifth time trying this voiceover, believe it or not. This is why I don't do them that often. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about these burrs here. These Cutsall burrs, Sabertooth burrs, Typhoon burrs, or I think Proxen's making some burrs like this too now. So some people in the group that I have, Carving Fusion, World of Wood Carvers, it's a great supporting group, guys. If you're not in there and you're on Facebook, join it. So, but they've been posting pictures of their cut saw burrs or whatever, the shafts bending on them, okay? Or them plugging up and the tips melting together, okay? Or the shafts breaking. I'm going to tell you what happens and I'm going to show it here. I'm going to prove it, okay? So... If you guys' shafts are bending, it's because you don't have the shaft all the way into the handpiece, okay? That's the first thing. If you guys are melting your burrs, the tips together, it's most likely because you're carving soaking wet wood. Just watch this. Watch the handpiece. Something's going on. I can see something's going on with my handpiece. You're carving soaking wet wood. It's getting plugged up in the burr. You're still running at full force at 35,000 or 40, uh, 30,000 RPMs, you're heating it up so much you're melting the tips of the cutter together. Okay? So last live video, I was curving a tree, that whimsical tree, and I broke a flex shaft. Okay? Watch this slow motion here. Watch when it slows down, really slows down. You're going to see a wobble in that burr. Because when I broke that sh flex shaft, I jammed the burr so hard in between the tree and the wood where I was carving, it bent, see? It bent the flex shaft. It bent the shaft on the burr. It's human error, guys. Sometimes it is mechanical error if they snap off the shaft. Now watch here. It's because I was running it too fast and too hard and it's human error. Watch. Look at the wobble. It's because I got the bird jammed in. Watch the wobble here. Bird's no good to me. Human error. 
I'm not saying that just because I'm going to cut all affiliate. I'm speaking for Sabretooth too. You guys, these burrs are rated for 25,000 RPMs. A Dremel 3000 runs at 30,000 RPMs. Do the math. A 4300 runs at uh, 35,000 RPMs. Just because you see me carving hard, guys, doesn't mean you have to carve. I do quick passes. That's why I carve so fast. I don't let the burr sit and, and get in a ditch and jam up. Well, like I, and that's what happened in the tree. I shouldn't say I don't because I did. But when I'm carving, I do quick passes. Think of it like mowing the lawn when it's first, your first mow in the springtime. When it's high, you can't cut it all at once. Or it plugs up your lawnmower because it's all wet and shit, right? But if you do few passes, your lawnmower will, will run fine and not plug up. Take your time, guys. That's all. Okay, guys, so I thought the uh, voiceover was done but i guess it's not so i gotta do it some more so i want to show you guys can see the crack going all the way down here this is how i hide the crack i i hate carving wet wood with these burrs i hate it because they plug up so anyways to hide that crack there i am cutting that part of the mustache off and boom there's the crack hidden down al alongside of the mustache You know, you guys, when you carve dry wood, you already know where it's cracked. When you carve wet wood, you don't know where it's going to crack. You just don't know. You might think you have an idea, but it could crack on the total exact opposite place. And I don't care for those carving burrs like saber tooth or cuts all or that are the pros and think this and that and think that I'm wrong when I'm saying this is my opinion. It's what I've learned. So here I am feathering away the um, back of the eyebrows. I don't know at this point what I want to do with the forehead. So I'm just kind of uh, doing this, tapering it away. I call it feathering it away. Kind of just cleaning everything up. Trying to get rid of all that old black wood off the face of the carving. But yeah, so guys, when you're running, uh, sorry guys, I'm not lecturing. I'm just talking. When you guys are running your handpiece and you feel something shaking check your burr out because if i kept on using that burr and it was just has a little tiny wobble it's hard inside the bearings in your handpiece so stop and investigate like i did hey i'm not no pro i'm just trying to give you tips and tricks see i'm doing quick but see how i do quick little passes i run it in so it's running when i go in and it's running when i go out like mowing the lawn Take the first layer off, don't clog up anything, then go back and take off an, uh, your second layer of grass, lower your wheels. Right? But this, for instance, just take off more wood. So there I am taking out the wood inside of the mustache to get it all level with the beard on the outside. Just let the bird do the work, guys. See, I'm just going back and forth. I probably had to do about 10 passes to get it all level. Just go different ways, different directions. So that you can see the mustache is raised out. So what I'm doing now is cutting in the bottom lip. This guy's going to have an old hanging lip. So you guys, when you cut inside your mouth and you have an open mouth, make sure you don't jam up your burrs because you'll break your flex shaft or you'll bend your burr. Here I am cutting the bottom of the lip. Inside there, this is where you'll break your burr because you'll get it jammed up. Just be light on your hand pieces, guys, till you get till you know the tool, right? Like so you see here, I'm cutting in the mustache higher to the nose. That's because it's hard to explain, but the more that you cut the mustache down from the nose, the more the top of the lip, the
the mustache will drop from the bottom of the nose. If you guys want to learn how to carve a wood spirit, I got three to full tutorial videos up there. They're like four series videos on how to carve a wood spirit. And I got to make another one for this year too. I just got to find the time. Okay, so there we go. There's the bottom lip in. Yep. Here's Johnny. Okay, so I'll say that this went pretty damn good. Um, it's got a big honker like I tried. I don't know what I'm going to... This is going to... Beginning part of this is going to be a voiceover. So I don't know if I'm going to repeat myself, but whatever. I really don't care. So you see here I got his nose. I just drew this on for you guys, right? I normally wouldn't draw this on. But you, you put your center line back down here. Put a line there, and this is where I'll carve on the on this side of the nostrils here. And then here. Then I'll take some of this wood away to make the nostrils stick out, okay? Then I'll put some shapes some nostrils in there. But this, um, here, I'll save this, the eyes for last. But, you know, so here I just carved here and here, right? I haven't touched any of this wood this wood yet I've left it old so once I, I'm done with the eyes and when I'm working on the eyes I'll probably thinking about what I'm gonna do here if I'm gonna leave it sorry if I'm gonna leave it like that right you see I gave this guy a sagging lip and um, you guys your mustache like I took this down but then I kept on taking I might not done on screen but then I'd take my mush down mustache down too because your mustache doesn't need to be sticking that far or that far off the beard right I could even carve this closer or closer here but that's okay I like it to, it's got some bend in it right so you can see how far the nose is sticking off okay so I'm not too sure about this part yet I kind of like it the way it is if I sand it I've already decided I'm not going to give this guy any beard hairs okay it's, it's just going to be sanded nice and clean all right maybe well uh, that's what i say right now but i am going to give him mustache hairs okay so his eyes <sighs> okay i got them drawn on i wanted to give him bigger eyes he's a big funny looking guy right big happy guy but look at this crack right here and i don't know like if i carve this eye i don't know if this crack goes underneath here or not this way Okay, does that make sense to you? I don't know if that crack, because if I try to carve this eye in, that crack goes under here. This whole, this part of this eye might cave in, right, when I'm carving. Especially on this side. You see this hole here? Right? Pen goes in it. I don't know if just this crack goes all the way up. I don't know if this hole carry out, carries on underneath this crack. So I'm just trying to say, guys, use your discretion. Like, you know, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try and carve the eyes. If they don't work out, well, this piece might go to like uh, donkey shit, right? So instead of me not going for it, I could just put my, my Dremel bit in here, my cut saw, and do my hollow eyes, right? But I want this guy to have eyes. So that's the uh, bottom line with this. I'm not going to do an eye tutorial. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to try and do the eyes. We'll see. I just want to say something. I'm no pro at doing eyes. So these eyes, I got to be really, uh, it's really going to be delicate here. So I'm not going to be filming. And just cross your fingers and wish me luck. And I'll see you back here in two seconds. Okay. So I'm not going to lie and say this um, carving the eyes and the nose was easy. Because the farther I get into the wood, the more spalted it is. So, you guys, when you carve spalted wood, who was just talking about it? I think it might have been Ben Studio in the Lake or uh, Just Carve Rob. I forget who it was. But anyways, when you carve spalted wood, you get hard spots and soft spots. So, that's what's happening with these eyes. So, I had to carve deeper and deeper. You can see how deep the eye, I carved the eyes from how high the eyebrows are. Like When I first started this, this is how far out it was. Right? Excuse me. So, but anyways, I'm not complaining. But I am complaining because I was just chatting with Just Carry Rob on Facebook Messenger. You guys, if you want to uh, answer, get questions answered about carving, just message Rob on Messenger. He loves to answer all the 
wood burning, wood carving tool questions. Because, yeah, that's what he likes to do. So anyways, he, uh, here I am yesterday just rushing my ass off to get the, the, uh, friggin' seahorse thing done. Sea horse fish. Rob's having a nap. Because I thought we were under the gun to get it done, but here he is today. He's just going down for a nap. Ah, <laughs> oh, just carve, Rob. Okay, so what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm going mental here. What am I going to do now? So these eyes aren't perfect. They're not perfectly round. Good enough for me. I've kind of almost had it. Um, also, this wood, I don't know how it's going to look with just oil on it. Because, well, it's kind of, ah, maybe there's a spit test. We'll see. We'll see. Anyways, I'm going to carve these eyes in and I'll film doing that. And use, doing that, I'm going to be using that uh, Dremel bit. I'll find it and show you guys. Okay. Okay, this Dremel bit here is uh, number 122. Two. It's higher, it's close to 118 and a 124. I'm not too sure. I'd, actually, it's a 125. Look, got a brand new one here in the package. A 125. It's uh, what Ryan Cook uses for his eyes and um, Kevin there over there at Sticks and Stones. So um, I'm just going to, hopefully this will burn at the same time. I don't know. Okay, so that worked. Uh, now I'm gonna, uh, what am I gonna do now? Oh yeah, I'm gonna go like this. Oops. Okay, so then you put the center end. So now you can do, you got those two lines in there, you got your center in, I'm making it so he's looking up, right? So now you can do another line underneath too. Okay, I kind of screwed that one up a little bit, but that's okay. So now let's give them some age lines. Do up here, your eyebrow line there. Do it here. Okay, and then we'll do with the lip here. Put 
another line in the let's put another line in the bridge of the nose here. Okay, I'd call that classic. I kind of screwed up his eye a bit there. No big deal. He's, a, he's just a old wood spirit is what he is. So let's get him off the table here and have a look at it. Okay, so here's what we got. His eyes aren't perfect if you see there. Whatever, I really don't care. He's a neat old guy. Okay, so um, I think he's neat anyways. So uh, let's see here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the uh, mustache. Maybe I'll give him beard hairs too. Yeah, I guess I could. It means I have to sand less here. So I'm going to cut some beard hairs in and some mustache. Here. I'm going to do different textures on the beard hairs. The beard hairs, I'm going to use my normal Dremel. I mean my normal cut saw. Excuse me, burr. And then for the mustache hairs, I'm going to use my... Uh, on my uh, aluminum cutter like this right here okay you get these on Amazon sets of this video is probably going on way too long anyways I'm gonna get this done and uh, by the way I want to say that I learned that Dremel bit from uh, Ryan Cook he taught me how to do the eyes kind of like this better though this he taught me this um, these lines here and Kevin and Ryan taught me this that and here and Kevin from sticks and stones also Gave me the idea to carve some extra lines in the face too, right? Like these lines. Yeah, so you got to give credit where credit's due. Okay, so there's what I got. I uh, carved all the beard hairs in the same. Um, I sanded it the best I wanted to sand it. I didn't touch up here. So I figure I got this much mineral oil, and this is pretty porous wood, so... I don't think I'll make it all the way, so I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. So anyways, I guess I'll start off with the mineral oil, and then I'll have to pick up some later. If I don't have enough. I'll just do that, yep. And you guys, if you're going to, um, why I like using the poly shade is because it hides all your, see here, I didn't sand good enough. Everywhere I didn't sand good enough, all right? You see little cut marks everywhere here. Because the oil brings that out. And the oils will bring, see that? It's like fuzzy in there. The oil will bring that out too. But whatever, it's a friggin' wood spirit. I really don't care. And I'm going to oil it, okay? But that's what I'm saying why I like to use the poly shade because it hides all this stuff. Okay, so I know this piece would look great if I put the poly shade on it, but that's not the point of this video, right? So let's put the oil on it. And you guys remember it goes darker as the oil dries and it sinks into the wood more. And uh, yeah, it's got it in this cup here. And I definitely know I won't have enough, but I want to at least get the face done. Okay, so how about I just get this uh, oil on. This is basically the same as uh, linseed oil. I gotta kinda try and use it sparingly so I need to kinda concentrate. <laughs> so I'll be back, how's that? Okay, so that's about it for me today. I think he turned out pretty good. That's what I was kind of uh, aiming for. Just an old wise guy. Um, I want to show you guys, like I was talking about the oil, but now you see like the cut marks in there, right? See them? So when you guys, I really said, like look at those cut marks all the way up there. Cut marks there, everywhere, right? So I really suggest, um, it's only my opinion, 
when you're doing when you want to finish your piece with oil the best the better it sanded the better it will look see see those cut marks there doesn't matter it's a friggin wood spirit it doesn't have to be perfect but anyway, so let me get this uh, downstairs. I'll stand it up against the wall and we'll take a quick look at it. I was lucky enough to have, uh, I oiled all this too, so it went darker. You see here, didn't oil there, but there's oil from here and uh, all the way up. Okay, anyways, let's go get it downstairs, lean it against the wall and call it a day. Okay, so here it is. It doesn't sit perfect, but it sits good. Nice and solid. So it doesn't force the buyer to uh, have to stick it in a the corner. They can just put it anywhere they want. So remember that guys, it was just a tip of the day. You know, like if you want to carve a walking stick or a piece to go on the wall, make sure when somebody comes to buy it, it sits nice and solid on the wall, right? Okay, that's enough. Hope you all good. And uh, I guess it's time to take the Christmas decorations down, isn't it? Okay, we'll talk to you later. That's a wrap.